The 1960s. It was an exciting time around the world, a decade of revolution, a decade of the Beatles. But here in India, the mood was very different. India fought two major wars in that decade. Famines were being reported across the country. It was nervous times for the young Asian democracy. Remember, this is the 1960s we're talking about, just the third decade of India's independence. It was also a decade in which India lost some of its tallest figures. Tonight, we're focusing on two of them. Lal Bahadur Shastri and Homi J. Bhabha. Neither of them need any introduction. Shastri was India's second prime minister, the man who led India to victory in the 1965 war against Pakistan. Everyone knows his famous slogan, Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan. Homi J. Bhabha was the father of India's nuclear program. He dreamt of creating a nuclear bomb for India. They were radically different men. Shastri was more conservative, a salt of the earth kind of person, while Bhabha was more flamboyant, a proper man of science. Do you know what both men had in common? An untimely death. Lal Bahadur Shastri died on January 11, 1966. He was in Tashkent, signing a peace treaty with Pakistan. Homi Bhabha died on January 24, 1966. He was the victim of a plane crash near the Alps. Their deaths were separated by just 13 days. And theories have surrounded both incidents, conspiracy theories. And guess what's common in all of them? A foreign hand. A new book has given those theories a new lease of life. It's called Conversations with the Crow, written by journalist Gregory Douglas. What does this book say? It is basically a compilation of interviews with Robert T. Crowley. He was the second in command of the CIA's Directorate of Operations. We're talking about the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, America's foreign espionage wing. Back in the 1960s, the CIA was running operations everywhere in the world. Remember, it was the height of the Cold War, and India was a non-aligned country. In this book, Crowley admits the CIA's role in Shastri and Baba's death. This is very significant. I'll read out some of the excerpts for you. This is what he said. We could have blown it up over Vienna, but we decided the high mountains were much better for the bits and pieces to come down on. Blown up what? Crowley was asked about Baba's plane crash. That's when he gave this incriminating answer. In fact, the full conversation is unbearably heartless. Listen to this. The journalist asked, how many people went down with Baba? And this is Crowley's reply. Who knows? And frankly, who cares? This is the second in command in the CIA. He also admitted something similar about Shastri. Let me quote again. We nailed Shastri as well. Believe me, they were close to getting the bomb. And so what if they nuked their deadly Paki enemies? Maybe they could nuke the Panama Canal or Los Angeles. Nailed Shastri, he said. That's what the CIA's Robert Crowley said. Now, officially, the US government denies any responsibility. These are just claims of one man. Having said that, they raise important questions. For example, the timing. Three months before his death, Homi Baba made a radio address. He said he could make the bomb in 18 months. All he needed was a go-ahead from the government. Did Shastri support him? Public records say he did not. Lal Bahadur Shastri was a staunch Gandhian. He was opposed to the idea of nuclear destruction. Yet, the times were changing around him. India had fought two wars in four years. The one against China had ended in defeat. And in 1964, China went one step ahead. They conducted their first nuclear weapon test. India was being surrounded by nuclear and hostile states, so people were warming up to the idea of nukes. Could this have prompted the CIA to retaliate? Perhaps assassinate Shastri and Baba? It fits with the CIA's modus operandi. They have a history of neutralizing political opponents. They tried to kill Cuba's Fidel Castro. Libya's Muammar Gaddafi, Serbia's Slobodan Milosevic, and Iraq's Saddam Hussein. So it is certainly possible. But so far, there is no evidence. Multiple government investigations have found no proof of foul play, yet this book changes the equation and changes it significantly. Perhaps they're the mindless ramblings of a retired American spy, but they're surely worth investigating. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.